folks, Candor here. This is going to be another one of those videos about tools that I have, use, and love. Today's topic, portable power. Now, portable power can come in many different forms, as you can see here. And yes, this is a flashlight. In fact, there might actually be a video coming up on that flashlight at some time. But as you can see, it is actually charging my mouse. It is actually a portable battery pack as well. But today's topic is going to be portable battery jumpers. Now, in fact, they can actually be more than just a battery charger and a battery jumper. But you're going to need to get one that not only works reliably, but also provides you with the features that you need. Now, I'm not going to go too deep into the techno babble about watt hours, amp hours, amperage, and all that. And for one thing, there's already a large number of resources out there on this already. In fact, I've placed a link below to another YouTuber, The Project Farm, that I strongly suggest watching. He goes into far more detail than I do on portable battery chargers, and I think you will be surprised by the findings. And when it comes down to it at the end of the day, all the most of us really care about is, does it work? Does it work well? And is it a good value for the money? So, let me show you the one that I have and explain why I feel it was the perfect choice. First off, let me just start out by saying that I have owned more than a few of these things over the years and have had a love-hate affair with most of them. Love it when I have one, hate it when they fail to work. Technology has advanced by leaps and bounds over the years, but that doesn't mean that even today you can't get a unit that is either poorly built or misleading in its advertisement, leading you to believe you're getting more than what you think. Marketing just loves to twist words and facts so that while technically true, are deliberately designed to make you think you're getting some newfangled, super duper amazing alien technology that is light years ahead of what current technology allows. And over the years, I have owned both brand name and off brand name, similar to this one, or this one, or this one. And while I may not have owned these exact models or brands, I have had the opportunity to use my fair share of these devices in my day-to-day -day life, in one form or another. Some have more bells and whistles, while others just give you the basics and nothing else. And before I go any further, let me just say that everything in this video is my own personal view brought about my own personal experiences. You may or may not agree with everything I say, but what I do say, I will say truthfully and honestly. Now, let's move on, shall we? I'm willing to bet that most of you, like myself, have never heard of the Halo. It has thus far been the most reliable and versatile unit I have ever owned. In fact, I own two of these, and have had them for going on a little over four years now. I just recently bought one of these for my father to use with his cars and camper. Up until about a little over a year ago, I used to maintain and look after cars at the old condo I lived in. Since my wife was the manager and we lived on site, everyone knew me, and inevitably, I would get asked by an owner to watch their cars and or prep them for when they returned for season. Usually by this time, the vehicle had been sitting for months and the battery was dead. And I have had, on occasion, had to use mine several times in a single day. And it has never failed to start one yet with little to almost no available power loss. So let's move on to the features and the specs. Now, first off, is the weight and size. By my fancy high-tech measuring device, I get about 7 inches long by 4 inches wide and an inch and a half thick. It weighs in at about 1 pound 10 ounces. I can easily pick this up between my fingers, and by that, I mean literally. Sliding it between the space of my index and middle fingers, lifting, holding, and moving it with no effort. 
This makes it compact enough to carry around and not take up a ton of space and quite easily fits in the glove box of my Mustang. There is a pretty bright flashlight mode, but it doesn't have any fancy strobe or SOS modes. It's simply a flashlight. Nothing more, nothing less. It can charge up to two USB devices rated up to 2.4 amps of current. It comes with an electrical power pack for charging and it also has a 12 volt accessory plug, which back in my day was called a cigarette lighter. The supplied cables for attaching it to a battery are short. Shorter than most. But they don't need to be long. Since this is so small and compact, you can rest it on the battery itself if needed. And with the cables being so short, they should easily handle the amount of current that will be drawn when used. I don't ever remember them ever getting hot, let alone warm. The most useful feature, in my opinion, is the 110 volt inverter allowing you to plug in any electrical device that uses 65 watts or less. Now to put this into perspective, my laptop has a 65 watt power supply and it runs my laptop for an hour and 45 minutes with its battery removed. Now I only normally see this option on larger, heavier units, and honestly, it's getting harder and harder to find units that have this feature anymore. If you're like me and live in a hurricane-prone area, this could be an, an invaluable feature. Now imagine this first scenario. You try and connect your laptop to a free Wi-Fi hotspot to apply for insurance or government assistance after a storm, only to find your battery dead or dying. Or if you're like me, you might have a police emergency scanner that can't be powered by USB. So while I could have purchased another NOCO GB40, as have several other people I know, truth be told, I have seen these units either fail to do their job they were intended for or worse. Either they wouldn't hold a charge long enough and be dead by the time you needed it, or not have enough capacity to jump a vehicle when showing charge, or just plain fail completely and becoming an expensive paperweight. I have seen these scenarios on three units now. And while they did function well when working, they became far too unreliable for me to trust. A few of my friends and co-workers have also experienced similar results, some in as little as a year. My halo knock on proverbial artificial imitation simulated plastic wood has never failed me yet. And the last time I charged my halo was the last hurricane preparation for Dorian of 2019. And as of five days before recording this video, it still had a 100% charge. Another big deciding factor in my choice was the price. For the same price as the NOCO GB40, I got a unit that has twice the capacity, two slightly higher rated amperage USB ports, and a 110 volt inverter. Now, while the GB40 does boast up to 1000 amps versus the 500 rated for the Halo, the likelihood of ever drawing that is slim to none. A normal car battery can supply around 800 cold cranking amps. And an average car or truck starter usually only draws anywhere between 150 to 200 amps. Maybe possibly slightly more if you have a high performance starter. You are never going to draw more power than your starter can pull. If you need a thousand amps to start your car, you have far bigger problems than a dead battery and is probably the reason you need to keep jumping it. Bottom line, if you're looking for a good battery jumper, you might want to look into getting a Halo. And the Halo has proven itself to me over multiple units across several years. And I'll put links down below where you can get one. It offers some nice features at a good price and a higher capacity than its competitor. Now, whatever brand you choose, I recommend getting one. You never know when you, someone you know, or a stranger might be stranded with a dead battery allowing you to become the hero of the day. Anyways, I hope I showed you something interesting and gave you some food for thought. And as always, thanks for watching and please don't forget to subscribe and click that bell icon. 
and please feel free to leave comments and suggestions down below. And until next time, folks, thank you again for watching.